because by definition and by regulation, in most countries at least, uh, sanitary, municipal sanitary wastewater is of organic origin, biological origin, I would say. That is suited for a biological treatment and all over the world this, these uh, treatment plants are biological treatment plants. So, so that's one uh, typical application, municipal uh, application. This treatment plant was built in place of an old one. They replaced an old one, the old one was taken away and we built this one. And the old one had a a, um, a buffer zone of about 350 meters. And once this was built, the, uh, the local developers uh, approached the council, the, the city council, that they would really like to reduce the buffer zone. Because uh, with this nice greenhouse established in the, in the village, they, they would like to reduce the buffer zone from 350 to 50 meters. And that's exactly what happened. And now they're building, uh, building and selling houses for half a million euros, 50 meters of the, of the treatment plant. A few examples I would like to show. It's all municipal. This was uh, one of the first plant uh, built in France in Loire Valley, uh, about a kilometer away from uh, one of the nice chateaus. And the, uh, our French friends have a very good sense of uh, taste and color, as you can see from this picture. Well, this is, this uh, is another example still under construction in a little town uh, in southwest uh, France, but you can see it's a historical setting. In addition to the municipal uh, application, if you think about all wastewater streams that is of biological, recent biological origin, I'm not talking about oil and gas, which is an ancient biological origin, but recent one, such as food industries, paper, breweries, vineyards, you know, the, uh, the process is obviously very well applicable. And what you see here is the interior view of a um, poultry processing plant here in, in um, Central Eastern Europe. This shows typical uh, treatment uh, ranges, um, both in terms of influent and effluent uh, effluent parameters. Of course, if uh, the influent is not from a sanitary uh, source, but from an industrial source, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, uh, then the higher level of influent levels are uh, experienced, but that can be also handled with uh, appropriate pretreatment uh, steps, such as uh, dissolve, uh, um, dissolved air flotation or anaerobic digestion or physical chemical treatment. This was one of the first ones we built in, uh, in Hungary, it was more than 10 years ago. And the, it was built for a real estate developer um, who was building an office park uh, logistical center of about 200,000 square meters. Now the real estate developer, who was, who was a large um, uh, American company actually, uh, they couldn't tell one technology from the other. They, they couldn't tell the difference between MBR, MBBR, SBR, and all the rest. Uh, but it was very important for them uh, how much they can charge for the next door office. So do they say to a prospective uh, tenant, you know, I have a place here next to the wastewater treatment plant, what is the price in that case? Or do they say, I have a great place for you next to the greenhouse? There is, it's, it's all translates to dollars or euros. It's an economic consideration. And that brings in the question of, or the realization, if you want, that wastewater treatment plants have physical footprint, and they have a psychological footprint. If I ask you guys here, you know, how close would you want to buy a house or an apartment to a wastewater treatment plant? Okay. So everybody is smiling, and usually the, uh, the unspoken or spoken answer is, it's usually as far as possible, or at least five kilometers, or two kilometers, but it's never closer than that. But that tells you there is a relationship to this whole process of treating our own waste. Now, here you're talking about a totally new approach. 
that is by using and harnessing the, the forces of nature, uh, it brings in the ability and because it's orderless and it's because it happens to be also aesthetically pleasing, a whole new set of applications uh, uh, emerge, such as this one when you can place it in the middle of uh, real estate development, whether it's commercial or residential. Interestingly, I've, I've met a couple of tenants who, because they haven't seen you know, the, um, the, the Hungarian uh, you know, so labels on the door, they didn't actually realize it was a wastewater treatment plant. So they would go in, they would visit, and later they would find, oh, that was, happened to be a wastewater treatment plant. Okay? Now, uh, obviously when we are moving, when these treatment plants move into the cities, a you know, whole new task and context will emerge, like architectural context. You know, you don't necessarily want to use a standard uh, industrial greenhouse, ever so nice the, uh, the interior and the plants might be. Once you are in the middle of the city, you may want to have uh, special architectural features such as this one. Or let's take a look at the next one. Or in climates where, again, greenhouse or some kind of a enclosure is not necessary, then you would uh, use um, uh, shading structure, again, um, which can very nicely blend into any kind of environment. As the decentralized wastewater treatment plant uh, are, will become more ubiquitous on a smaller and more smaller and smaller scale, uh, the possibility also arises to place them into campuses and various, uh, whether it's uh, university or, uh, or real estate campuses, and treat the, the waste water on site and use the water recycle for toilet flushing or for uh, cooling tower uh, supply, water supplies.